Good evening, everyone. Uh, as we um, enter into this uh, third week of study about prayer, and not just studying about prayer, but actually doing uh, these different types of prayers with different emphasis um, in our prayer life, um, going to be talking about um, praying for our family that we're not just concerned with praying for ourselves and our needs, which are important, uh, not praying for the needs of our nation, which are overwhelming, but to pray for those who are around us, our family, our friends, um, to to talk about um, the different types of prayer that we have and the ways that we approach God. Um, By way of a story... I would like to reference the, the picture that you just uh, saw with the praying hands um, as we, uh, the cover slide to uh, this lesson. I wonder if you've ever thought about that. Many of us have seen the, that before. I wonder how many of us know the story of the praying hands, that that picture is about 400 years old, and it was made by a very poor Polish family, lots of children, um, and they had two, the the parents had two sons who they couldn't afford to send their sons uh, to be educated because you had to pay for your own education back then. They could really only afford to educate one of their sons. They were both very, very good artists, and so one son said one brother said to his brother you go to the art institute you go and get yourself trained i will go down to the salt mines and um, support you and support the family and then after you're done then you can help me out and so the two brothers made this deal amongst themselves and after um, the one brother uh, had finished his education, he was very celebrated. His paintings, he actually became a very famous um, painter and artist, and, uh, and he was receiving notoriety. And so he came home to his brother and said, you know what, I'm going to fulfill the terms of our agreement. Now it's your turn to go and to get uh, educated and learn how to be an artist. And then we both can be famous. And then it was at this point that his brother turned toward him, breaking down in tears and said, Brother, there's no way I can do this. Look at my hands. They've been broken. They've been mangled. My body is beaten down working in the salt mines. He could no longer do it. And and, and he had as much of a gift as his brother. And so by way of honoring his sacrifice, his brother the artist sketched his brother, the salt mine worker, sketched his hands linked together in prayer as honoring of that sacrifice that his brother made. Now, the world never knows if the one brother was a better artist, but that act of love was commemorated in that picture. And that act of love that was commemorated in that picture is the essence of the feeling, is the essence of what prayer for our family members is. It's distilling down that communication that we have with God to be an act of love for our family, for our friends, that we take time to intercede, to pray, to ask God, to have joy with God. Not for ourselves, our accomplishments, our difficulties, but for that of others. That w- This is how we show our love for each other. Uh, we find in the Bible uh, nine different types of prayer. And um, we've all prayed prayers uh, for ourselves, for our family and friends, but we've never really thought about the different types of prayer. At least I haven't 
had very many lessons studying about the different types of prayer that we have uh, and that we can do. Uh, sometimes in our prayer life, we let it bleed over one to another, which, which is fine. But if we think about and distill down how we are to pray or what we're actually doing in that prayer, it, it can help, help lead us to a better place in our prayer life, I believe, to be more effective, uh, to, to actually know what we're asking for, why we're asking for it, and how we ask for it. So I'm going to break apart um, and, and just reference the, the verses where I get this from so that you don't think that I'm making this up out of whole cloth, but I'm going to reference the verses. I'm not going to read them. You can go back and read them for yourselves, but I'm going to more talk about the ideas found in those verses. The first one that we come to is a prayer of supplication. We find this in uh, the book of Philippians, um, but supplication is approaching God, coming into His throne room, and asking for uh, something. Um, Philippians says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known. This is a simple prayer of we're requesting things. How many of us here um, that we've gone to school and we've said, Oh, Lord, I forgot to study. Help me, please, to remember the answers to these tests. That is a prayer of supplication. Help us with a specific request. The second type of prayer uh, found in the Bible um, is found uh, is a prayer of intercession. Uh, we find that in Ezekiel chapter 22. We also find reference to that in 1 Timothy um, chapter, uh, chapter 2 verse 1. Um, in 1 Timothy, it says, Therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That we're asking for intercession of God. That we come to God and say, Father, you have the cares of the world on your shoulders. You have billions of lives in your hands. But we're asking to please intercede, and not on my behalf, but to help someone else so that they have a particular need, be it a health concern, be it uh, help with other people, something going on in, them, in their lives. And we're asking them, you know what, please, God, can you come and intercede with this person and help them with something? So if supplication is praying for our needs, intercession is we're praying for the needs of others. That... The third type of prayer that we have is a prayer of faith. That in James chapter 5, and I will spend just a moment and read this in James chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. That we have a prayer of faith that there are things that are going on in our lives. Sometimes they're health concerns. Sometimes they're family concerns. By family concerns, maybe you're in an argument decades-long, years-long argument between brother and sister. Sometimes families are fractured uh, along lines that the, the division of property uh, is one that, I mean, that's so old, that comes down to us from the Old Testament that people uh, have been killed over the division of property um, and, and, and arguments lasting long. That this prayer of faith that we come to God we don't know how it's going to be resolved, but we say, we have faith in you, Father, to come to you and to ask you to fix this in your way, that we come and say, we have a health concern, we have 
cancer in our lives. We have an argument that's been going on between us and nobody is willing to bend. Maybe it's I'm 100% right and they're 100% wrong, if that's the way it goes. But we come in faith and say, Father, help us with this situation. And we don't know how that resolution is going to happen. But we ask in faith for his help in this. We also find another type of prayer, and that is uh, a corporate prayer uh, in the Bible. Uh, we find this in the New Testament in the, books of, in the book of Acts, both in chapter 1 and chapter 2, that when we're told to be in one accord, to continue prayers in one accord, that all of us together, that we don't know, we do that every Sunday morning, we do that at the beginning of the service, we do that at the close of service, that we condense all of the prayers, the things that have been brought forward, and we ask our Heavenly Father, knowing that we don't know all the details of the problem or the issue, but we come together and to be of one accord. This is a fruit of the Spirit that, we're all, that we talk about. This is one of the joys that we find in being a Christian, that we are here together, rich and poor, black, white, Hispanic, that we are together, that in some places in the world would never happen. But we join ourselves together in prayer, in communal prayer, that we all join together to be asking our Father for His peace, for His love, for His help, and that we're all of one accord, that we all have our differences. Um, that, that no matter what side of a particular issue we come, we are at at the particular moment, we join together in unanimity and we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer as human beings, realizing that we all have our individual issues, but before God, we are all the same, that we approach His throne room corporately together in one accord. And that is, brings great strength because there is a blessing that God has given us that we far too often don't contemplate, that, that joys when shared among friends are multiplied, that when we bring a good deed or a good thing that's happened to us to our family here, that that joy is multiplied and spread among other people. But sorrow and pain... Have you ever noticed that when you bring that to a group of people, you share it, that you leave with your burden lessened, that sorrow and pain are divided in corporate prayer, and joy is multiplied by this? There is another type of prayer also that we find in Scripture that's praying in the Spirit or praying in tongues. That we find that in Corinthians chapter 14 and also in Romans. Um, that, um, that, let me speak specifically uh, verses 14 and 15 in Corinthians. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding. That there was a time where we find reference in the New Testament where the gifts of the Holy Spirit were actually to speak in tongues and to pray in a different language. This was needed uh, at the time, but we were also told that those gifts, those fruits of the Holy Spirit would die out. Um, we believe they died out with the uh, passing of the apostles and the 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 giving of the complete scripture that we had God's revealed word in the New Testament. 
It might not have been written down in the nice book uh, that we have. It might not be uh, on this phone that we have with our Bible app. Uh, but we had the complete revealed Word of God given through His apostles uh, by the time they passed from this earth. So while praying in tongues and praying in the Spirit did exist, uh, we don't pray in tongues, but this praying in the Spirit uh, does still uh, exist that we, we ask for, do we not, all the time, the spirit of understanding that we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us in our prayer life, to help us all the time, to, to guide, guard, protect, strengthen. That is praying in the Spirit, asking for Him to help us in the particular time with a particular need. We also find in Scripture that there is a prayer of thanksgiving. We find that in Psalm 100, so we find that in the Old Testament. Uh, it's a very famous verse. We even have a song about it. We will enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. That the joy, one of the joys that we have is when we pray to our Father that we get to see that uh, prayer uh, fulfilled. Sometimes it's filled very quickly. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it's a lifetime. Uh, but a prayer of thanksgiving, of thanking God for His uh, blessings. The next prayer that we have is a prayer of confession and repentance. We find this in uh, 1 John chapter 1 and also James chapter 5, that uh, I personally do this every time I pray because, like all of us, I need a prayer of confession and repentance. And again, this prayer might be the most common uh, prayer, I think, uh, but it's also the most necessary because um, confessing our sins is doing something that is vitally important. God knows our sins. God knows our shortcomings, but we spend years, some people spend lifetimes lying to themselves about something and not admitting the truth. They do it all the time. We've seen it. But to open our hearts, to hit our knees in prayer, and to confess to God and say, I am wrong, that this is a blessing that we are given that this is a fruit of the Spirit, that we can leave our burden with God no matter what it is. That lying, cheating, murdering, stealing, all of these things that we can leave with God, that we confess. And then the other part of this, and the other important, is that we repent, which means that we turn back from that doesn't mean that we do it perfectly, that we completely go on 180 degrees as soon as we leave that, because we all have problems in our lives that we struggle with day after day after day. But we repent of that and say, I'm going to turn aside from doing that, and I recognize that it's wrong. We have also a prayer of dedication and consecration. Uh, we find that in Matthew chapter 26 and also in Judges chapter 16, that when we dedicate ourselves like this, that when we take time to, co to contemplate, to concentrate, to begin a season of prayer, that we dedicate ourselves to a purpose, that we consecrate, that's a very large word for we set aside a time that we set aside our mind, our spirit, and dedicate it to the pursuit of something that God would have us do, that we consecrate ourselves, that we make ourselves pure, that we set aside the cares of the world, and then we dedicate ourselves for a time toward prayer for what we're going to do, be it a great work, be it something small, because you can consecrate yourself to 
if you want to think of it this way, you can consecrate yourself to studying for your test tomorrow that you have in school, and you set that time aside to dedicate to study. That's the concept that we get here in Scripture. And the last one I'm just going to touch on, but I'm not going to talk about because this is not a prayer um, that, um, that Jesus uh, would have us do. He even counseled his, uh, his disciples to turn aside, turn aside from, but it's a prayer of imprecation. And that's calling down curses uh, upon uh, people. We do find it in the Old Testament. Um, uh, Elijah um, did it. Um, but in Luke chapter 9, uh, the, that's where we find that the disciples, uh, the apostles, asked Jesus, should we call down a prayer of cursing uh, like Elijah did? And Jesus said, you do not know the spirit which you're called to. That's not our spirit to call down curses. We are told to be faithful. We are told to be prayerful. But we leave um, judgment at the throne of God and let Him be the one uh, to decide um, the judgment for, the, uh, for those problems. Um, in this talking about prayer and breaking it up into the different types of prayers, these are the things that can help deepen our prayer life is that we, if we understand what we're praying for, how we're praying for it, that the concepts found in the Bible about it, that we can then look outside of ourselves, outside of praying for forgiveness for the sin we just committed and praying for our own well-being, but then we turn to our prayers for our family, for our friends, and that they fall into these different categories and that we dedicate ourselves for a time to pray prayers for them, for their needs, for their hopes, for their aspirations, inspirations, for their difficulties, and for the thanksgiving that uh, we have with God, that He gives us this avenue of prayer, and that He tells us He will be faithful and answer our prayers. Uh, I leave this with you as we begin to pray after this class, that I leave this with you. Think about these things, and I hope that it deepens your prayer life. Thank you.